Hi everyone and welcome to the Jimmy B Harvest channel. Today we're going to be talking about tomato plants and everything you need to know to get a bountiful harvest out of your plants. I grew a number of tomato plants a number of ways, inside, outside, soil, hydroponics, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how all those plants turned out and give you guys the tips and tricks you need to make sure you're growing big juicy tomatoes. When starting seeds, I like to use small pieces of rock wool, which I completely soak in water to let out any air, and then put a seed on each piece. After a few days in the dark, your seeds should germinate and begin to grow. At this time, I like to move them into a small hydroponic reservoir so that they have constant access to water. We'll also need to move these plants into some light so that the leaves will open up and the plant will begin to grow. I'm using a small LED light here, however, any windowsill should do fine. It takes about a week or so for your leaves to begin to mature and really develop, and at this time I like to move the plants into individual containers and begin to give them nutrients. I'm using lettuce in this clip here, however the process with tomatoes is exactly the same. I gave each of my tomato plants four weeks to grow inside of a water bottle so that they can mature and prepare for me to move them to their final growing locations. I'm going to be growing in both soil and hydroponically to compare the results of these two growing methods. While removing these plants from their original net cups, there was some damage caused to the roots and some roots were completely torn off. While this isn't great, the plant will recover over the next few days and begin to grow again. I'm using regular old gardening soil purchased in a bag and advanced nutrients for my hydroponic reservoir. By six weeks of age, the plants that I repotted were once again growing nicely. Both the hydroponic and soil plants were of equal size and they were both beginning to grow flowers. The hydroponic plants I left indoors were growing much, much quicker. They had grown several additional nodes of leaves and flower sites in comparison to the outdoor plants, and many of their flowers were already in full bloom. Each of the flowers on a tomato plant has the potential to turn into a tomato if it is pollinated properly. Particularly with indoor plants, you'll want to hand pollinate the flowers by gently shaking around the stems and the stalks of the plants. As your plant continues to mature and grow, don't be surprised to find these small white bumps along the base of the main stalk. These bumps are actually roots, which provide the plant access to air. Back outside, it took until about eight weeks for these plants to begin to blossom fully. These outdoor plants were about two weeks behind my indoor plants, and I think that was a result of the root loss caused when these plants were repotted. Over the next few weeks, it was quite clear that my indoor plants were suffering from blossom drop. Blossom drop is a condition where your flowers, after blooming, they shrivel up, dry out, and just die. No tomatoes are produced, and you're left with the small stems behind. Blossom drop is typically caused by a lack of nutrition, or if your plant is overheating, causing those small leaves and flowers to dry out. I think my plant was suffering from the later, which was the plant was drying out in the sun provided by the window. Although it's kept inside and the conditions temperature wise were quite stable, this plant still seemed to be drying out and was becoming quite high maintenance. In the coming weeks, I did have a few flowers convert into tomatoes. However, I was losing probably 80 to 90% of my flowers to blossom drop. These indoor growing conditions seemed ideal for vegetative growth for these tomato plants. They were skyrocketing upwards and growing leaves like crazy. I had multiple suckers coming out and new stems and new stalks being created almost every day. That said, the blossom drop was causing these plants to be generally unproductive. Growing indoors in this way would be excellent as a way for starting new tomato plants, propagating them and taking them to other locations as the vegetative growth is so quick. However, growing a full plant to maturity is a little bit too high maintenance if you don't want to be running multiple fans or running your air conditioner for a long time, trying to keep temperatures perfectly suited for the tomato plant to grow. 
Ultimately, the blossom drop got the better of us and I decided to give up on these tomato plants that I had growing inside. They grew quite huge in comparison to my outdoor plants. However, the tomato production just wasn't there and there wasn't enough reason to keep this plant going. By 12 weeks of age, my outdoor plants had grown quite nicely and many flower sites were turning into tomatoes. The flowers were pollinating themselves quite nicely, growing on a balcony where they received a lot of wind to shake them around. At this point, it was also quite clear that the hydroponic plant was growing considerably faster than the soil plant. My plants were, however, drying out a bit at the tops and the younger leaves. I would just need to water them almost daily to keep up with the intense sunlight that they were receiving out on the balcony. As you can see, these outdoor flowers were nearly all converting into tomatoes. This was great production from the plant and they were growing multiple tomatoes in a dense small plant as opposed to the indoor plant which grew very large and still did not reach the same number of tomatoes. This tomato production was consistent with both the soil grow and the hydroponic grow that I had outside. The only difference between the plants was the noticeable size increase of the hydroponically grown plant. As your tomato plants continue to mature and grow larger, there is a considerable amount of upkeep required to keep your plant growing as optimally as possible. Tomato plants grow a considerable number of vines which allow it to split out in nearly all directions. Each of those vines has the potential to grow leaves, flower sites, and additional vines, which can very quickly lead to an out of control plant. As you follow along the main and mature vines of your plant, you'll notice small new vines coming out just above leaf sites. These suckers, as they are often called, are new vines which will create new leaves, new flowers, and even more vines. You'll want to be quite proactive with a pruning strategy to keep your plant focused on the flowers and tomatoes it already has and not continuing to grow larger and larger. About once per week, you'll want to scan your entire plant for new stem growth, which you can prune. You'll want to prune them while they are still as small as possible so that your plant isn't wasting energy and nutrients on growth, which is going to be unproductive to you. The great thing about this is that tomato plants very easily propagate and any of these small or large stems which you cut from your main plant are going to very quickly clone and allow you to get multiple tomato plants growing. When preparing a stem for propagation, you'll want to cut off any lower leaf sites which would be submerged in the water. And I like to cut the bottom stem to try and increase surface area, which will allow it to easily absorb water. You'll want to keep these propagating plants out of direct sunlight. And within two weeks, you will have a number of roots growing from these stalks. One of the great benefits of growing with hydroponics is your ability to inspect and monitor the root system of your plants. Healthy root systems should be a clean and vibrant white color. They'll also be very soft to the touch and bend quite easily in your hands. It's important to check up on your root systems periodically to make sure that you're not suffering from any root rot or possible algae growth within your reservoir if light is able to get inside to your nutrient solution. Algae growth inside of your reservoir will cause your roots to look green, but ultimately won't harm your plants too much. As we reached the peak of summer, I did run into a tomato plant emergency. My tomato plants outside had dried out considerably, nearly all of my leaves had shriveled up, and I thought these plants might be on the brink of death. I provided these plants with lots of extra water and covered them under a bed sheet for a few days in the hopes that they would rehydrate themselves. The plants responded beautifully to a few days without sunlight and were quickly back at full strength. In this clip, these plants are 21 weeks of age 
and you can easily see that the hydroponic plant on the right is five to six times bigger than the soil plant on the left. The benefits of growing hydroponically don't stop there. Not only is this plant considerably more productive, but it's way easier to take care of. The soil plant continually dries out and needs rewatering, whereas the hydroponic reservoir gets filled up and is fine for a week or so. At this time, I began harvesting my plants as the tomatoes appeared fully ripened. This was the one area in which the soil plant did outperform the hydroponic plant. The tomatoes I harvested from my soil plant did taste slightly better than those from the hydroponics. I did however decide to get rid of the soil plant as the hydroponic plant was growing considerably better and I was harvesting new tomatoes almost every week, many of which were bursting at the seams, they were so big and juicy. When harvesting, I try and cut these branch sites as close to the main stem as possible as this reduces the incision size and helps prevent infections. The last thing we need to be aware of is the end of our growing season and when the first frost comes. For me, I'm about six weeks away from my first frost and so I'm taking steps to make sure that all of the tomatoes on my plant ripen. I don't want any tomatoes to go to waste and so I've got two helpful tips which will make sure your plant ripens the tomatoes quicker. As you can see, I've got a number of young green tomatoes here which have yet to ripen. We're hoping to see as many of these ripen as possible and be harvested before the season ends. Number one, we want to cut back to the plant. As you can see, I've cut back all of these stems above where the last flowers are. Cutting back the plant is going to help the plant focus on the flowers and tomatoes as opposed to growing because there's no more time to grow. We just need to focus on the tomatoes we have. Tip number two for getting your tomatoes to ripen quicker is to stop feeding nutrients to the plant. The nutrients really promote growth, which we don't need anymore. And so at this time, I will only be giving my plant water cutting out the nutrients entirely, and this will help the plant to focus on ripening the tomatoes that it already has, as opposed to trying to grow new ones. You'll want to be as proactive as possible, cutting back your plant and trying to help it focus on the tomatoes that it does have, as it's better to end up with 100 ripe tomatoes as opposed to 200 unripe tomatoes. And that's just about everything that I have seen and learned this year growing my own tomatoes. I definitely recommend growing tomatoes as they are a fun and simple plant to grow on your own. It was incredible to see the productivity differences between growing tomatoes hydroponically and in soil with hydroponics being clearly superior. Thanks a lot for checking out this video and good luck with your own tomato grows. Be sure to let me know your growing tips and tricks in the comments below and you can help support the channel by smashing those like and subscribe buttons below. Happy harvesting!